Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on the channel here. Today we're tackling this mudroom here. It's right next to the garage and it really has a mudroom. It's fine if you really kind of think about it. We just don't like the cluttered stuff the kids drop their backpack. But we also have this little closet here that doesn't have a door. It doesn't have anything. We just use it as like a catch-all. So today's video, we're going to take this poor little excuse of a mudroom and turn it into that. Six individual lockers, tons of overhead storage, and even a cabinet with an electrical port for the vacuum. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Let's get into this video. Let's go. Let's get started. We're gonna start taking everything down, put it away, break everything apart, and knock down this wall. Let's do it. Now the fun part, demo. Uh, use a knife to cut the caulk lines around everything that's seen there. And then after that, we can use our stiff uh, putty knife uh, and then start breaking things away. But regardless, we're gonna smash. But first, let's talk about sponsors of today's video, Ritual. With the new year, it's never too late to start a new ritual and incorporate a healthy lifestyle into your routine. I've been taking Ritual vitamins for about six months now to fill in the gaps in my diet. Ritual recently launched their essential protein shakes, which helps maintenance of lean muscle mass and helps promote active aging for everyone, not just athletes. Essential 18 Plus Protein contains nine amino acids that are important for building lean muscle. It satisfies your appetite, super important to me because I don't want to go home hungry, and it helps support bone health. Ritual's Essential Protein contains 20 milligrams of vegan pea protein. It's free of soy gluten and major allergens. It's vegan friendly, it's got no artificial flavors, and it's formulated with non-GMO ingredients. The shakes have no added sugars. They're sweetened with a combination of fermented sugarcane and monk fruit. The delicious vanilla flavor is handcrafted using direct from farmer vanilla bean extract sustainably harvested in Madagascar. And the supply chain of the Essential Protein is fully traceable. The pea protein is actually derived from peas grown in USA using regenerative farming practices. Essential protein is available in daily formulas for those 18 plus, 50 plus, and for pregnancy and postpartum. Mmm, that's good. Right now, Ritual is offering 20% off your first month, and here's what you're gonna do. Go to ritual.com forward slash Mr. Build It, use my promo code Mr. Build It at checkout, and start fueling your body right. Now let's get back into this video. Let's go. Uh, we're gonna work on the toe kick first. I'm gonna keep it a simple design. So we're gonna take two by fours and lay it down on the ground here and then set the cabinets on top. Now, I'm gonna keep the same pro uh, profile, 21 inches out. We'll do a wrap around and we, not to waste any space, I will do a 45 in the corner here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scratch the uh, angle idea and then instead, I'll make either the two cubbies that are here extra long so we can put you know space in here or this cubby will be extra long, possibly on this side. Uh, we're gonna start working on the cabinets. Only makes sense to work on the base cabinets first and then kind of build it up. I have a couple of schematics that I've kind of drawn up here to make my life easier. This part is gonna go in where the closet used to be, and then this is gonna go on the outside. I got four cubbies here, and I'm gonna have another two there with one extra long one. This little space right there is gonna have this butt up against it, creating that L. The dimensions for the first cabinet are all done. I used a little Sharpie to indicate exactly where my pocket holes or which pieces the pocket holes are gonna go. So I'm gonna start mass producing those pocket holes and then put them together with inch and a quarter screws and wood glue. All that's left right now is to attach these little supporting brackets up here and up here, and uh, therefore we can actually secure this into the studs of the wall without having it come out. This one's looking good. Let's start building this cabinet.
All right, the last of the bottom is done. Let's go throw it in. For attaching everything, I'm gonna be using the shims. They're gonna come both on that side of the wall and underneath here, make sure everything is leveled and balanced. Now we just trim off the shims with our oscillating tool and then we'll start building the towers. I'm gonna to take a cut here. This is my 13 inches deep of a locker and then this comes at 21 inches. So essentially this will be a corner, corner cabinet. I'm gonna use uh, a little bit of table saw and then finish off the cornering part with a detailed uh, uh, recip saw. That should be well, not a recip saw. We're not demoing anything. Scroll saw or jigs jigsaw. I can't think straight. I'm sorry. A little pro tip when you're using like a circular saw or anything like that on a cross cut on uh, plywood, lay down some tape uh, on both sides. Therefore, that will prevent the tear out and go nice and slow. Because this is a corner cabinet, I don't like that it's going to be exposed. I decided I'm going to kick the top and bottom part out and just put a full filler piece in the back that way this angle will be one solid piece. All that's left for cabinets, uh, at least the carcasses, is the top parts. I did put a divider down the middle. Reason why, this is too much of a span that things will start sagging down. Just a strong reinforcement. I'm gonna take the top cabinets down now that I know everything fits and we're gonna install the bench top uh, that's gonna go on top here. I figured out what I wanna do with this little cabin right there. We're gonna turn it into like a broom and mop holder. So we're gonna have our like Dyson vac and all that stuff. Now it needs an outlet to charge. Luckily on the other side of this wall is a refrigerator outlet. So I'm gonna put a new outlet there after the bench is done. Let me show what I'm using for bench material. So these are prefabricated or pre-laminated sheets of pine. I bought two of them, they're pricey, they're like 50 bucks. We're gonna cut it at 45 degree there, use pocket holes and glue to secure it, chop off this end and I'll move it over here because this has to be longer and they don't make it longer than this. Okay, so while this is drying with the glue, let's go install our electrical plug. And just like that, we're gonna feed our cables through on the other side to tether into the kitchen. Everything's sanded to 220 grit. Everything's looking beautiful. We're talking with the missus about the thing we're gonna use and I've learned my lesson. Give her example of the same wood species. This is a cutoff. Uh, I wrote down some of the stains that I had. She is a big fan of this one right here. This is a semi-transparent. Uh, original oak, I believe that's what it's called, which means it's gonna get lighter as we apply it here. We'll do one quick application, let it dry, and then install it. I am gonna secure all these loose uh, pocket hole uh, slots already here. I'm gonna use my square here, make sure it's nice and square. Then we'll secure the top, make sure it's trimmed out, and then we'll put the outlet in. And just like that, we got power for our vacuum. Since the top cabinets are not secured yet, I figured I'm gonna take the time right now, throw some pocket holes around, and then we'll start installing these cabinets and then start making our face frames. We're gonna take this two by two, put it behind here because the next cabinet is gonna hit it right in the corner. And that'll basically tie all these two together. It's finally face frame time. I'm using one by two, this is poplar. It's a little bit more dense than the select pine that you'll see. We're gonna start cutting things up and then we're gonna attach all the pieces together with pocket screws and wood glue and then attach that sucker to those cabinet carcasses. So we got our glue here. We have our clamp that's gonna just push these two joints flush together. And most importantly, the square. So we're gonna make sure nothing is out of whack here. First face frame is done. Measure corner to corner. It should be the exact same number. This is a perfect setup. How good does this look? It's finally starting to come together. It looks like something that's a fancy piece of furniture. That's a tight fit, boy. We can officially scratch face frames off the list. We're done with them. Let's start moving on towards the drawers, the drawer carcasses as these themselves. We'll use half inch maple plywood and we'll put it together. All right, our first drawer is officially done. Keep in mind, half inch material. You gotta use the one inch pocket screws. Six drawer carcasses are done. Let's go throw them in place and see how they look.
Getting started on the doors, I'm using three inch, one by three uh, pieces for the outside frame, which is style and rail. Now this rail part here, that's what you have to do, do a little bit of math. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take our 20 inches and then we're gonna subtract five inches. Why five? Because one by three, the actual number is two and a half inches. We're also gonna have a little tongue and groove that's on each side, three eighths of an inch on each side. All we do is subtract 0.75, putting this at, what is that, 14 and one quarter. And that is gonna be the cuts that we do on our miter saw that allow for us to put things on the router. So for the raised panels, the middle part, we're gonna be able to get two out of here. I'm gonna rip it all down and get things ready for the router. We're ready to start using the router. It's a three piece router kit. There's piece one, this is piece number two. It's a different color, I know it's a different brand. And then number three, one creates the styles, the channel right in the middle. The other creates the rails, that's the cross members. And then this is a raised panel door, which is the middle part. It creates a nice little beveled edge so you can go right in the middle. All the styles are done, let's do the rails. The rail bit's done, let's do the panel. Not gonna lie, that was probably one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had woodworking was using that panel bit. It's just so big, and when you get the RPMs where it's supposed to be, it screams. We're gonna put the glue on the tongue and groove there. I am not gonna put any glue on the inside. This has to be able to move, expand, and contract, or else it will warp our door. Now we have good pressure, not too much because you don't squeeze the glue out. Last thing we need to do is check corner to corner. Folks, we have a beautiful door that's a professional grade. Let's bust some more out. So the door sat overnight. I'm gonna start sanding all the glue off, getting it nice and smooth, and then I'm gonna hit it with a round over bit just to give it a nicer look and we'll just start busting things out. These are the lower drawers. One of the things Irina wanted to do is she wanted to do an idea where we would cut a notch out. To keep it consistent, I'm just gonna use my tape, lay it right there about half there, trace it, and I'm also gonna lay down the tape on these things, use my jigsaw. Now the reason why I'm gonna lay down tape because this jigsaw is probably gonna do some tearing out on the backside. This will keep it to a minimum and it'll look real nice. Folks, doors are all ready, sanded to uh, 120. I got my uh, latex primer ready here. I'm gonna put it in my HVLP sprayer. I'm gonna dilute it roughly about 10%. We're gonna get a nice coating on there and we'll try to cycle them as much as we can. After they dry, we'll definitely give them a light sand with like 220 maybe, and then we'll start with the paint. Paint time, the color we're going with is this olive kind of looking color. It is by Benjamin Moore. The color is called Intrigue. It's in a satin finish. The product is more important than the paint color. This is a waterborne acrylic alkyd. What it is, is instead of like a latex paint where you, it's gonna wash off over time with dirty hands and whatnot, uh, with this, it's an oil-based molecule surrounded by a water-based molecule. So you can dilute it with water, run it through an HVLP sprayer, which we're using the five finish sprayer just for better control. Uh, and then once the water evaporates, you have the solidity of an oil-based product, which is super tough. Gonna mix it up and start spraying. I'm hitting it up with just 220 grit very lightly just because once you put the primer on, it starts rising all the little hair follicles of wood grain. So once you cut it down, when the paint goes on, it's gonna be like smooth as butter. I took the Liberty and wood filled any of the gaps that'll be there, that will be more seamless. Now I'm gonna hit it with uh, 120 grit, get it ready for painting, and then we'll start uh, masking everything off. Uh, one of the things I have to do is put the filler pieces here and over there. Originally, I was gonna get it sized in perfectly, but now I feel like the easier way to do is just put a piece like that and it looks kind of two-dimensional and I appreciate that because the doors are gonna go flush with it. Thinking ahead. Baby, 
Folks, today is the day we're finally gonna get to start installing all these doors, drawers, drawer faces. Went to the hardware store, picked up my drawer slides, got 12 of these and uh, got 24 of the hinges. <sighs> Maybe I spent 300 bucks and that's terrifying to me. That's how much hardware it costs. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start installing these hinges first. We're gonna flip the sucker over. We're gonna use this little jig that you can buy at any hardware store. It comes with a Forstner bit. We're just gonna line it up, put where our holes are, drill bore out of this hole so the drawer uh, hinge can go in, secure the screws, and then we'll just attach it to the face frame. You wanna pre-drill your face frames or else these core screws will split the hardwood. I can't mount this door here because there has to be enough of a gap. It starts hitting this door. Never knew that, but if you guys are doing it, give yourself a spacing. You'll prevent, I'll have to figure something out here. Issue number two, well, I have to move my light. So this is my little configuration for that uh, corner cabinet. There's a special hinge that they sell. So I'm gonna follow these little instructions. It's a little unorthodox because I have to create my, with a Forstner bit, a hole that overlaps or comes off the edge. But other than that, it's my first time installing it. I'm gonna see what I can do by following directions. One of the last modifications I need to make, and it's a silly one, I knew I was gonna do it in the beginning, I was just too lazy when I was building these, is I have to cut out a half circle on top here to kind of match this. And I already traced it out, I'm gonna use a jigsaw. Put tape on the inside part just so nothing tears out. Do a quick little cut around, and then I'll brad nail this on, and then screw it from the inside, and then wood fill any of the holes. Just so it'll go a lot smoother. I'm gonna finish doing that. Slap on all the door pulls and hooks and what have you and I'll show you this big reveal. Check this out. All right, let's talk about the budget for this mudroom. The plywood costs $400. The face frames for the cabinets were $150. The doors ended up being $493. The drawers were $174. The hardware, which included everything, was $300. And the paint and primer was $60, making this project happen for $1,577. Hey, that is it for me this week. Thanks so much for sticking around and watching yet another one of my videos. If you're brand new to the channel and you like videos like this or any other kind of home improvement project, make sure hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell that will be alerted every time a video comes out. Connect with me on my social media, all the links will be in the description below, as well as my Patreon, where we release hour-long extended footage, stuff that did not make it into an 18-minute video. A lot of useful stuff over there. That and the links to my social media will be in the link description below. Check that out. Tune on this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye. Be very mindful that you keep your sander flat. I got my uh, old work outlet, which means you can cut a hole, put this in, and open up these butterflies.